Hey, MJ traders and investors, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth. It is Thursday, March 18th, and hope everyone had a great day today. In this video, we're going to be discussing the news and events on the day. So the main topic is Schumer and the MJ bill will stop big alcohol and tobacco from dominating the market, he says. And we'll look at a few other news and events. We'll look at the Hexo earnings results. I did a video earlier today. You can check that out for an in-depth analysis, but we'll just look at the numbers quickly and we'll look at some charting and what to expect into tomorrow. And we'll look at the rest of the Canadian and the US sectors. But before we do, make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel. So Schumer looking to stop big tobacco and it kind of makes sense. I wonder why we saw the Canadian LPs partner with Altria and Constellation Brands, maybe it's almost as if they knew something and the whole, you know, the whole world is just a big organized uh, mess. And, you know, as much as they say that the market isn't run or manipulated or run by anybody, it definitely, in my opinion, is. And there's no way that, you know, the United States is going to let Mexico and Canada have all the fun. And there's no way that they're just going to allow alcohol and tobacco to, to completely dominate the space either, in my opinion. And this is a bill to federally legalize MJ that's being drafted to top senators will specifically seek to restrict the ability of large alcohol and tobacco companies to overtake the industry. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said on Thursday, instead, it will prioritize small businesses, particularly those owned by people from communities most impacted by prohibition and focus on justice, justice, justice as well as freedom. So that's pretty cool to see that we got such a, you know, a strong advocate for the space. So you can check out the rest of that article on your own time, but that was pretty cool. MJ banking bill reintroduced in Congress with broad bipartisan support from more than 100 lawmakers. So we could see some safe banking act updates and potential for that to get passed in Congress. We also saw that new Mexico MJ legalization bill heads to Senate floor following contentious committee hearing so some more progress and headway there. We also saw that leading candidate for Biden's drugs, Caesar, embraced uh, MJ's health and economic benefits. So you can check that out. Pretty cool article as well. Canadian MJ producer Canopy Growth borrows $750 million. So this, th this time through debt, a debt deal. So stock diluted, didn't really like that today. Afria Tilray to host... April shareholder meetings about planned merger. So you can check out the details for that. Votes need to be received by April 15th. And proxy before 4 p.m. Eastern, April 12th. The meeting will be held on April 14th and April 16th, respectively. So Freya on the 14th and Tilray on the 16th. So expect some updates there. Hexo announces positive adjusted EBITDA and 94% increase in net revenue from prior years. So almost 100% year over year net revenue growth. So that's good to see. There's some key operational highlights. So achieve positive EBITDA along with seven consecutive quarter of adjusted EBITDA improvement. Total net revenue increased to 32.8 million up 94% from the prior quarter and 12% from the first quarter of fiscal 2021 ended 30 1st of October, 2021. Non-beverage Canadian adult use revenue increased by 72% from Q2 2020. Adult use net revenue increased 10.5%. So again, you can check out the rest of that for all of that detailed information. And again, check out my video from earlier on today. It was actually late last night on the West Coast and got that information out as soon as possible. So the EPS negative 0.17 versus a forecast at 0.047 and revenue slight beat there at 32.83. We were expecting 32.28 in estimates. So moving on, Sebastian St. Louis says that the Canadian MJ sector is entering, entering the most competitive phase. And that is very evident with all of the mergers and acquisitions. We also saw body and mind reports record financial results, 300% record revenue growth, Q2 2021 compared to Q2 2020 and reflects strong execution. So reported Q2 revenue of 6.31 million, a 19% increase over the first quarter of fiscal 2021 and 300% increase over this period last year. 
and net operating net loss of 1.15 million, positive adjusted EBITDA of 0.66 million, inventory of 2.22 million, and working capital surplus at January 31st, BAM had 1.17 million in cash and working capital surplus of 1.13 million. Total assets 41.44 and total shares were 108 million and change. Common shares were issued and outstanding as of January 31st. So they give an update on their different facilities. So you can check that out again on your own time. Just as a reminder, we have quad witching tomorrow as well. So we could see some potential volatility leading into that here in that could affect the MJ space as well. We'll just have to keep close tabs on it. But taking a look at Hexo here. So we saw a new high of the day. We broke the high of yesterday. We confirmed a daily uptrend, but then a nasty reversal. And we had this inverse head and shoulders that we were watching the left shoulder at 660. So we could potentially see that support come into play. That's also lines up well with, e with the weekly EMA 12. So I'm targeting the 655 area if we do start to consolidate further and the 660 also the left shoulder so if we come down form that right shoulder here there's still a possibility that we could see a little bit of a fake out here and just flush out that last bit of weak hands but again spy and the broader market the S&P 500 is going to be very important if we lose weekly support check out my broader market video that I just did not that long ago for an update on that and what to expect in the broader markets tomorrow but we'll want to break the high of today asap and that is at 850 after that we have a lack of resistance up until 921 and then the recent high is at 1104 ten dollars psychological and this is the usd chart so we are just looking for a higher low now compared to 558 bit of a red flag changing the daily trend straight into a lower low and further daily consolidation now we're no longer in an uptrend and we're scouting daily higher lows again compared to 558 and we'll want to change the hourly trend back to the bulls and see here we lost the hourly uptrend so when we do bounce here we should see a decent bounce as we have a lower high every candle for the last seven candles or so but we could see an ema 12 and 26 bear cross and we got support on the hourly at 664 after that after losing 725 so we'll be watching the hourly chart and then we'll zoom out to the daily and then we'll look for a potential resistance break and then potential continuation on the daily and a potential break of that inverse head and shoulders if we see some bullish continuation from that pattern so moving on taking a look at the rest of the sectors PCLO, Tilray, OGI, APHA, and Hexo led the decline. In terms of bulls, we had PWRN. That's pretty much it. Everybody else is flat. So just taking a quick peek at most of the names. So everybody pretty much starting daily consolidation. Once again, CDC didn't break the low of yesterday, which is notable. And we'll just take a look at a few other names here. Didn't break the low on high tide, OGI. Daily consolidation, SNDLs didn't, still didn't lose the low. It had earnings, but closed the day red. So I mentioned this in my video yesterday. We needed to be cautious of a potential sell the news reaction because we have run from the lows almost 100% on SNDL. So we need to be cautious. And Tilray looks like it didn't lose the low of yesterday either. Actually yeah, held by 15 pennies. BFF didn't break the low, it looks like. Might have been a double bottom. No, we lost it by three pennies. But a lot of potential inverse head and shoulders shaping up. And we'll be watching those patterns very, very closely. So Hexo on the weekly here, again, just as a reminder, I'd like to see us close over the 10-week moving average tomorrow. It's the last day of the week, so close over 717 would be bullish. And we want to see the stochastic start to cross bullish again and we don't want to see this bear cross actually get follow through here on the MACD but a close over seven important and 717 even better and then in terms of the weekly moving averages we had the 100 weekly moving average at 874 we topped out at 850 and now we're rejecting 
and we have the 50 weekly moving average down at 382. That's a long ways away. We'll see how we have set up. We'll see how the setup is on the daily moving averages, see if we can get any help there. So 534 is the 100 day moving average and the 50 day sitting at 712. So lots of support around the 712 and 717 area. $7 psychological after that, we'll be looking at 660, that left shoulder, and then the lows here at 558. After that, we'll be looking at the 100-day the 100 moving average and then the 200-day moving average, but still well above those averages, still above the, the weekly VWAP, and we bounce perfectly off that level as well, so that'll be a key level that's sitting at 567. So moving on to the U.S. space, we'll just check into some of our names here, IIPR, TAUG, GRWG, and HARV leading the decline. On the bull list, we had VREO, MMEN, Kira, Truel, CL, so a lot of the big MSOs. Speaking of MSOs, let's take a look at the ETF MSOS. So we broke the high of yesterday, didn't break the, high, the low of yesterday, so we are pulling back within that range from yesterday, but ultimately saw a daily uptrend confirm and we had a new higher high after setting that higher low but again pulling back with the market so spy is going to be extremely important going into tomorrow bam held up relatively well closed at 77 cents so not much of an earnings reaction there gtii had an earnings yesterday as well and closed the day essentially flat so again we saw a little bit of a sell the news and wouldn't be surprised if we saw a bullish day tomorrow or to begin the week with news on safe and New York legalization. So we'll take a look at a couple other cure leaf. Did it break the low of yesterday? No, it didn't. So cure leaf looks really strong. And taking a look at IIPR down over 7% today, just getting crushed, but still looking for a higher low compared to 160.91. CL. Rejecting at EMA 26, but hasn't started daily consolidation. Definitely got affected by the drop in SPY, but holding up relatively well here on USMJ. And that likely has to do with the fact that SAFE could be coming soon, uplisting to major exchanges. So we'll see if that SAFE Act gets passed. It could also have to do with New York legalization news and other factors as well. So we'll be keeping close tabs on the MJ space. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth for an MJ Sector Review. Take care and we shall see you tomorrow after market close for a couple more update videos. Take care everybody and have a great night. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel. It shows me some support. We'll talk to you again real soon. Take care everybody.